What up, YouTube? This is Night Dragon 669 coming to you with my review of uh, Young Justice Episode 7 in depth. I'm <sighs> um, just waking up kind of, you know, for a while. Uh, I was going to do this review last night, but I had some problems with my uh, phone, and it kept cutting out when I was nearing the end, and I was getting pissed, and yeah. Anyway, Uncle, uh, Episode 7, entitled In Depth of Young Justice Invasion. I just want to point out that it's now being officially called Invasion on the TV and in the TV guide. Um, that's just a random fact. This episode, I thought I raged more than any other episode to begin with. Not even, I didn't even rage that much when Superman, Superboy and Miss Martian were, like, not together. I mean, I literally raged when I first saw, like, the first was it, five minutes of the episode. It's like, you know, he's, Artemis came back. Woohoo! That's awesome. And last week he had Wally, Kid Flash came back. So that was amazing. Well, not really, because it was Bloodlines, and I didn't like that episode very much. Um, but uh, right now, so yeah, Artemis came back to the team for a one time thing because she died. She was killed off. That's what they want us to think. Because in the first five minutes, they go, oh, all of a sudden shows them at Cape Cod, or Cape Canaveral, some NASA base thing where they launch a missile, a satellite. <clears throat> but, um, what I saying? 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 Okay. Yeah, it shows Nightwing at Cape Canaveral, like 1,900 hours or whatever. He's not saying going one, two, three, <laughs> and it pans out to Artemis. He's giving CPR to Artemis, and all of a sudden he, go, he goes, "She's dead." And it's like just cuts off, and goes back to showing her around in the cave. Everyone's happy to see her. Um, later, it shows him at the mission. This episode also dealt with Paris' personal character development in uh, uh, Miss Martian and Superboy. We learned a little bit of what happened within the five years time span um why they broke up more or less we know that Superboy was aging internally but externally he was not he didn't want to put the stress on Mega Man um what else is there apparently he seems like in my opinion he seems like he's developing psychic powers himself because I know in the I'll show it again The box gun, that's what was in the way. Uh, what is this anyway? Hold on, I'm just going to clarify the people. Oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's So, yeah, this is what that was. The bomb. Dark Dragon or something like that. Uh, anyway, what I was saying before, uh, if you can see it, I'm not sure if you can or not, but here, I'll move into the light. There. See in this comic right here? Um, this is a part uh, at number four. It's the future is now. One, it's um, Jeff Jones, Mike McCona, and Ivan Reeves, and Tom Grummet. Um, and this one right there, you see Super, <clears throat> you see Super Bowl right there, apparently in this one, he has psychic powers, I'm not sure if this is an official thing or what, I mean, I don't label myself as an expert on DC stuff, but I label myself as a knowledgeable person. Um, but, yeah, they, he's going to tell us the development there about how, he didn't like the fact that Martian trying to change his opinion of her forcefully. Uh, at one point, he brings up the fact that she's acting like Simon says, which, if none of you know who that is, he's the one from season one and two, the tele telepath that Mr. Martian and gets in a fight with. Um, but yeah. Set.
Sorry, you didn't mean to drop you. Uh, anyway, um, as I said before, but yeah, they get in that whole argument. Lagan boy gets pissed in this episode. He's more agitated than anything because he doesn't want help. Like, Connor and Lagan boy, like, are at each other's throats, I want to say, almost. They are constantly fighting. Lagan, like, I'll point an example in this episode. Apparently, it was Lagan's job to restock the aqua breathers. Well, Superboy tries to get one, and there's none. So it ends up Miss Martian has to go and save him. Because she's the only one who other other team members can breathe underwater. Um, what else is there? Um, the Aqualad also comes back to this episode as uh, Calador, a black man's son, which is officially true because I saw an image of Black Mantra, and they look exactly alike. I'm not telling, I'm not saying how scary it is. Um, oh, yeah, also early in the episode, we get an update on Roy and Impulse. Impulse is staying with uh, First Flash and his wife. Uh, Red uh, Roy is at a um, uh, hospital recovering. Well, this is the, um... But back to the beginning where I said Artemis died. Aqualad killed her, stabbed her in the gut with an aqua blade. And I was like, what? 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 No. I cried. I literally did cry a little bit. I mean, it's like, what just happened? And... You can see, like, he's, he doesn't even look like he's faking it there. But, as she thinks before Superboy Miss Martian appears, and you see Super goes, I hope you're a heartbeat. The latest show them at the cave where they're discussing the events that happened. I can't remember his name, he's the black guy, he hangs out with, uh, B, or what, yeah. B or whatever his name is, I don't know. The one who could shrink and shoot fingers. Um, but he goes, where's Nightwing? And it's, he goes, oh, he went to tell Wally. I'm like, oh. And I'll get depressed again. Um, you see Beast Boy comforting Miss Martian again. There's a good development of sister brother relationship. I do wish they would do a Beast Boy origin episode. Like, showing him acquire his powers. I mean, what they can do is they can run, instead of running Young Just, uh, Green Lantern, they can give us two Young Justice for the price of one now. So instead of running Green, An- Green Lantern, the animated series over. Or, you know, what they can do is they can miss it up and run, like, Justice League Unlimited or Justice League or, you know, Superman, the animated series, you know. Run to the old DC stuff, not rerun Green Lantern. Um, what else is there? What else is there to talk about in this episode? Oh, yeah, at the end. But as I was getting to... At the end, he goes to a warehouse near uh, Bloodhaven, apparently. That's where um, Wally and Artemis were staying. Which, I always thought Bloodhaven was more crime-infested than Gotham. But that's just something I read in fan fiction, because I, I don't know really, but... Anyway, it shows Nightwing looking at a picture of uh, Artemis and him from season one when she first goes to Gotham High. So, um, yeah, anyway, in this, at this point, he's sitting there looking at the picture, and he goes, Wally, is that you? Because he heard a noise in the background. Well, it's not. It's Aqualad. What is he doing there? He killed Artemis. As I said, he killed Artemis. But all of a sudden, Wally appears with a woman. Like, Wally would have never cheated. And then it's like, No. No, yes, Artemis is alive. 
they pulling a fast one on everyone, even in the team, even in the Justice team, even in the Justice League. Everyone thinks she's dead. So then, what, what, what did Jay do? What was Roy technically do? Conroy, Arsenal. We would Arsenal do? Because technically speaking, Arsenal is Jade's brother, uh, Artemis' his brother now. Because Jade and, Ar- Jade and Arsenal are married. Cheshire and Ar- uh, Arsenal are married. They had a kid. That makes them family. They're not thinking this one through. Look how much effort it took in the put to find Clone Roy. You think Jade's not going to go and kill Nightwing now? The plot holes in this episode are thin and thick points. It's like, what about the backlash from the other leaguers? What about the backlash from Batman? What happens there now? It's coming down to the point where they're getting close to an ending that's going to make us all go. That did not happen. It's coming down to ending like that. Um... My, I also want to talk more about this. Since they brought Artemis back, do you think they'll bring uh, Jason Todd back as, like, the Red Hood randomly? Can anyone else see them doing that, just randomly bringing back Jason Todd as Red Hood for Young Justice? Uh, what else is there? Um, oh, yeah, as I was saying, but Artemis is alive. And apparently, Aqualad's in a deep cover. Wow. Deep cover. Did not see that one coming. Not after the convincing story you gave us in earlier, in earlier episodes about how, oh, they killed Tallulah, you got Tallulah dead. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, that makes me question, is Tallulah actually dead, or is she really alive somewhere, hidden away, you know, by Nightwing and Armis and... Red and uh, Speedy, the Kid Flash. I don't know why Speedy's not in <laughs> But yeah, so this episode was more about. What? What just happened? I had to do a double take and watch it several times. And you can slightly see where he dropped the blood packet. You can't tell that Aqualad curved the knife. Except for the whole. Look in the eye, sincereness about welcome back to the team. It's like, what, what just happened here? <sighs> but yeah, so Aqualad's back and is still a good guy. Artemis, technically dead, but alive. Nightwing. Uh, I don't know. If it was me, I would have had Kid Flash be left out quickly, and then tell him, then tell him that she's alive, but it's been a plan, and he needs to make it look legit. Because if it was me, I would just punch Nightwing first, and then, you know. But that's just me. So, um, yeah, that's my review right now. Stay tuned. I got. Another review coming up later today, some point either today or tomorrow, for uh, Kaijudo Rise of the Duel Master, Episode 2, Part 2. Stay tuned for it, people, and have a good day.